Welcome back to the Marketing Chat Podcast. I'm Kelly. Oh my gosh, it has been ages since I've done a solo episode. And I am sorry to say that this is going to be the final episode of the show. Last October, I started a new podcast called Podcast Launchpad. Its mission is to help women entrepreneurs use podcasting as a marketing tool to boost their authority, expand their audience, and get more clients. Right now, I'm publishing three episodes a week, so it's a lot to do that and keep this podcast going. Plus, I'm a co-host at Geek Girl Soup, the film and TV podcast. That one is just for fun, but we do that one every week. I have loved doing this show. I tell you, I was loving it more when I was alternating solo episodes with interviews. I switched to just interviews when I started Podcast Launchpad, and I had already recorded enough interviews to last several months. Well, I published the last one last week. I've been turning down guest requests because I don't have time to do them anymore. And too many potential guests have been reaching out who honestly wouldn't be the right fit for this show. Like, their clients are multinational, multi million dollar companies who pay tens of thousands of dollars for their services. Yeah, y'all are solo entrepreneurs and freelancers for the most part. Didn't they listen to any of these episodes before reaching out? Clearly not. So let's talk about that. Today's topic why you should be a podcast guest. Being a podcast guest is an excellent marketing tool to promote your brand, boost your authority, develop collaborations and referrals, build your list, get more listeners to your podcast if you have one, sell more books if you've written any, and get more clients. And all of this happens without doing any selling on the show. It happens through having a conversation during the episode, sharing valuable information with the audience, and being yourself. In fact, if you end up selling on the show, the host likely won't publish the episode. Guest appearances aren't putting on a performance. They're about co-creating kick-ass value for listeners with the host. I've had a few guests appear on this show, or I've done interviews with a few guests. They ended up selling the whole time. So I ended up not publishing those episodes. You benefit because you're introduced to a whole new audience. You're being associated with your host's expertise. You're essentially being recommended by the host. And yes, you are showing off your expertise and authority, but you're doing it in a way that's being generous, not all me, me, me. If listeners like what they hear, they'll check you out. They'll follow you on social media. They'll look into your services. They'll get on your email list. Now, podcast guesting is also excellent for boosting the SEO of your website. How? When you're a podcast guest, the host will put a link to your website in the show notes and on the episode page on the podcast website. These are called backlinks. Google loves backlinks. The more backlinks your website has, the more that Google sees your site as a trusted authority. It boosts the domain authority of your website. And backlinks are not easy to get. One common way that people have gotten backlinks up to now is to reach out to other sites to ask to write a guest blog post or article on that site. This is really time consuming, the reaching out part and the writing part. You don't want to send out duplicate posts or duplicate articles from multiple sites. So you're writing or rewriting or tweaking fresh content for each site. And you tend to get a lot of no's when you reach out making that request. In contrast, it's pretty easy to become a podcast guest. Hosts that do interviews are always looking for guests. 
if you can provide the content and the value they're looking for, if you're the right fit for their audience, then they'll say yes to having you on their show. Now, it is really important how you pick shows to approach and how you reach out to the shows. So first, here's what you should look for when researching podcasts to be a guest on. First, you wanna be on shows that are in your general niche. So look in podcast categories that are related to your business niche. You want the show's audience to overlap with your ideal client. If the show's audience doesn't contain any of your ideal clients, then it's a waste of your time to go on that show. If you're a marketing coach, you don't want to go on just marketing podcasts, though. You can go on podcasts for coaches, for entrepreneurs, for podcasters, for small businesses. You get the idea. Next, make sure that the show is active and does interviews. By active, I mean they've published an episode at least within the past month. For me, I don't reach out unless they've published an episode in the past two weeks. And if they do only solo episodes, don't reach out. That means they don't take guests. Next, look at the cover art of the podcast. When your episode gets published, you'll be sharing it on social media and in your email newsletter. Will you be happy to share that cover art or the individual episode cover art that will likely have your photo on it? If not, if the cover art doesn't look professional or it looks too dippy, then don't go on that show. If you won't be proud to share it, don't go on the show. Next, listen to a few episodes. Do you like the host's vibe and energy? Does the host interrupt their guests? Is the host having an actual conversation with a guest or are they just asking bullet point questions and then not asking additional questions based on the guest's answer? You don't want the host to be interrupting you, right? And you don't want bullet point questions either. You want a real conversation. You do want the host to contribute to the conversation. You don't want it just a, here's question one, you answer, and then move on to question two, and so on. It's so much better, it's so much more valuable to the listeners when it is a conversation, when the host is contributing. Now, once you've created a list of shows you'd like to be on, how do you reach out? Oh my Lord. I have so much to say about this. I will keep it brief and stay calm. I get so annoyed about this because the majority of guests and agencies that reach out to me do it very badly. I have had very, very few people do it really well. And when they do, I email them back and I praise them for doing it well. I am so grateful when they do it well and I tell them, I give them that positive feedback. Some of what I'm about to tell you may seem really obvious, but people don't do these things. So please jot them down and do them. They will make a huge difference. They will really make you stand out as a guest, I promise. When you email a host or even use a system like Podmatch, which I highly recommend, first thing, use the host's correct name and mention the name of their show. I mean, duh, but people don't do it. So my full name is Angela Kelly Smith. I go by Kelly, as you know. I write in my podcast description and on my website that I go by Kelly. My guests call me Kelly. And yet when people email me, they write, hi, Angela. They clearly did not do their homework when they researched my show and me. Then when people email me, most of them write, love your show. Okay. I have three shows. 
Marketing Chat, Podcast Launchpad, and Geek Girl Soup. Which freaking show are you talking about? You want to be a guest on, quote, my show? Then name the show. <laughs> Even if a host has only one show, first of all, are you sure they have only one show? Second of all, if you are sure, still name the show. Prove that you've done your homework. Okay. Then they don't tell me what in particular they, quote, love about my show. So tell me, tell the host in your case, one specific thing that you love. Pick out one episode, not the most recent one, but also don't go back too far and find some tidbit to mention or quote. This demonstrates that you actually listened, that you really listened to at least one episode. Now, do not write that you'd be a quote, perfect fit for their show. You haven't talked to the host. You don't know exactly what they're looking for in a guest. So don't be presumptuous that you'd be a perfect fit. Instead, write something like, I would love to be a guest on your show to help you create an awesome episode for your listeners. Something along those lines demonstrates that you care about the host's listeners. Their listeners are their top priority. So for that guest appearance, they should be your top priority too. Next, propose one specific topic with a few bullet points for it, like a few takeaways. What's the most, what are the most valuable things their listeners will get from it? Just a few, three to five. And make the topic something that they haven't done in about the past year. You can even write, it looks like you haven't done an episode on this topic in the past year. Again, that shows that you've really done your homework on their show. Now, you can give a couple of alternate topics without bullet points or alternate general subjects. I prefer giving specific alternate topics. But it is absolutely essential to promote to promote or sorry to propose one specific topic you do not want to make the host figure out a topic for you so don't say hey i'm an expert in marketing and i see that you have had other guests on about marketing or you're a marketing podcast i'd love to come on to talk about marketing oh my god no, that is way too general. And that is requiring the host to figure out a topic for you, or it's requiring a Zoom call or phone call with them to work with you on what topic. It is your job to come up with a, a topic unless they reach out to you. But in this episode right now, we're talking about having you reach out to them. So you have to do the work for them and say, I would or write to them, I would love to come onto your show to talk about, in my case, for example, how to use a podcast to as a marketing tool for entrepreneurs to boost their authority in their field. That would be just one example. Or I could pick to expand their audience or to get more clients. You know, it doesn't have to be all three of those things, but it could be. So that would be a very specific thing. Then I would give three to five bullet points. And I could then give, you know, like two alternate topics that are within my wheelhouse. So podcast guests have way too much work to do for their podcast and in their business. If they have to do that work for you, they are going to pass on you. Next, give them a tiny bio because they need to know who you are, what your skill set is, but make it only one tiny paragraph. This is just an introduction. It's like an elevator pitch. They do not need your whole life story here, and they don't need the full bio that you'll be giving them once they say yes to having you on as a guest. And I'll be talking about that in a few minutes. 
And also give them a link to your website. I can't tell you how many people reach out and don't give me a link to their website. Then I have to Google them. And if they have a, a common name, they may not come up. If their SEO is not very good, if they don't have many backlinks, they still may not come up readily. Maybe their LinkedIn comes up and then I have to search there for their website link and some of them don't even have it there. That's too much work for me to do. Give them a link to your website. If you've already done other guest appearances, then you can give them the link to the page on your website that features those appearances. So yes, you will put together a page, uh, you know, a speaker's page or a page for featured on where you will have a list with links to your uh, podcast guest appearances. You'll end the email by offering to chat with them to see what they're looking for and if you are a good fit for their show. Some hosts require a screening interview and others will just go ahead and schedule you. So offer to chat with them. When it comes time, so let's skip ahead and say that they've said yes to you. When it comes time to actually do the interview, they might send you some questions ahead of time so you could be prepared. I tend to do that. Or you could send them some suggested questions ahead of time. I love it when my guests do that. I don't always use them. And if I do, I totally change up how they're phrased. I put them in my own words. Now, if you send questions ahead of time, do not include any questions along the lines of, tell me a little about yourself. They're already going to ask you something like that, most likely. So come up with some really thought-provoking questions and don't expect them to use any of them, much less all of them. Now for your bio. When you give them your official bio for the interview, and often hosts will read a little bio at the beginning for your introduction, keep it to no more than two short paragraphs. I usually edit the bios that guests give me. I cut out a lot of it to edit for length. Listeners, y'all, don't want to hear me read a guest's resume. I made that mistake early on. If you've been with me this whole time, you know what I'm talking about. Huge mistake. Hosts will want a photo of you. We tend to put the guest's photo on the episode cover art. You want it to look great. You want you to look great on the cover art. So send them a high quality, high resolution photo. And you can send them a couple of options. I've had some guests send me a link to a, a Google Drive folder that has even a bunch, you know, five, six photo options. Now, what we tend to do is remove the background in the photo because I'm not going to leave your background in to put it on my cover art because I have a format for the cover art. So background gone, and then you're there in my cover art template. I had one guest give me, it was like six photo options, and one of them was on a transparent background. Oh my Lord, how awesome is that? So if you have a fabulous photo of you that's on a transparent background, offer that as an option that saves the host work, and then you are assured that your image with the background remove is going to look great instead of giving them one that may end up being a little bit fuzzy around the edges or something. You've picked one that looks great on a transparent background. Now, in the interview, relax. Be yourself. Remember that it is not a performance. You're not selling anything, even yourself. You are having a real conversation with a real person, the host. You're sharing valuable information with the listeners. You don't have anything to prove. Now, yes, you are highlighting your authority and your expertise, but it is going to come through naturally 
through the value that y'all are co-creating in this episode for the listeners. I asked my guests toward the end of the interview what they do, whom they work with, and how listeners can get in touch with them. Most hosts do this, so you will have the opportunity to promote yourself directly. Now, after the interview, when it's all done, the recording is done, and, and you know, you're saying goodbye, you will want to build a relationship with hosts with whom you really hit it off. You can get referrals from hosts. You can develop collaborations. You can send referrals their way. Some hosts could become clients. And you'll develop friendships with some hosts. So I've sold books as a result of being a guest. I've gotten clients. I've definitely developed friendships. I've sent referrals to other hosts. They've sent me referrals. They've hooked me up with other podcasts to be on and sent other awesome guests my way. It is really a beautiful thing. Now, I mentioned Podmatch earlier. It is a fabulous online service for matching hosts and guests. It is a lengthy application process for guests. And the system also vets hosts and their podcasts to make sure that the show is active. So you know, hosts know that the guests on there took the time to write a good bio, upload photos, you do submit suggested questions, you put in your area of expertise. So it takes time. It takes 30 to 45 minutes to fill out the application. And it is a paid service. So you're not going to have everyone and their brother joining like some other online services. And hosts, their shows have to have passed the quote pod fade line. So they cannot be brand new shows. They have to have published a certain number of episodes and the system doesn't tell you how many that is. So you know, or you, you can be quite certain that they will publish your episode unless something goes terribly wrong. Like you end up selling and then they're like, no, I'm not publishing it because she was just selling the whole time. So as long as it's a good episode, they'll publish it because there the show isn't going anywhere. So that's what this that's why the system vets so well. Now, if you want personal training on being an excellent podcast guest on finding shows, on reaching out, on prepping yourself to be a great guest, I recommend getting in touch with Jason Sircone. I'll put his link in the show notes. His whole business is to consult and train value-driven coaches and consultants on becoming top podcast guests. He's got several ways to work with them, and he is awesome. As a podcast host and podcast guest, as you can see, I am super passionate about this topic. Again, most guests reach out in a mediocre way or an outright bad way. I really want you to do this in a real in a really great way. It will make you stand out and create trust with the host right away. Reaching out well shows the host that you care, that you are committed, and that you have respect for the host and their show. Wow, that's it. I invite you to join me at Podcast Launchpad. Having your own podcast is such a powerful marketing tool to boost your position as a thought leader in your field, to grow a new audience, and to get more clients. The early episodes there are all about starting your own podcast. All the solo ones are. So you can go back to the beginning and learn how to launch a podcast from scratch. 
And if you already have a podcast, you can find episodes that will help you market your podcast, brand your show, create kick-ass episode titles, boost the SEO of your podcast, and so much more. I alternate solo episodes with interviews with amazing guests. I hope to see you there. Link in the show notes. So this show isn't disappearing. It's staying here as, I don't know, not archived, a legacy show. So it'll still be here. So go back and check out older episodes. Here are a few of my favorites. The episode on brand love with Dr. Aaron Ahuvia. The one on having authentic conversations and DMs with Tracy Beavers. How to be a top speaker with Brendan Kumarasamy. And how to find your brand personality with Kel Kelly Whitman. Oh, man, I wish I had made it to episode 100 on this show. This is episode 90, only 10 away. <laughs> Podcast Launchpad is only a little over four months old, and it's already at episode 70 as of this recording. So you've got a lot of options to listen to over there. I really hope you'll join me. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. That's it for the Marketing Chat Podcast.